Okay, this is a tutorial on uh, points, lines, and planes. A lot of definitions in this lesson, so I'll try to keep it brief and in our um, designated time. Uh, what I would advise for you is to periodically pause your screen and to fill in your definitions on your chart that you have, and then just kind of follow along with comments that go with. So points, lines, and planes are kind of the foundation of geometry and of the figures that you'll you'll use a lot in geometry and the ideas and patterns that we discover with geometric ideas and um, some of these concepts that we'll be discussing over the next few weeks. Um, the first one, of course, is point. And a uh, point is a specific location on a plane or a line. So a specific location is the way that I want you to think about that. So what I need you to understand from previous discussion was that we talked about lines being an infinite number of points and functions being created from an infinite set of points. And every single one of those points is a specific location. Notice that we had an X and a Y value because it was like negative three, five, where it was left three and up five. And that specific location was marked by a dot. Now, one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have is that that dot is the actual point. No, the dot marks the location. It's the location that's the point. So the point actually has no height, no width, no depth, no length, no dimensions whatsoever because it's marking a location. And then from there, we can build. Here's a notation. You can see I've got um, the dot that kind of traditionally marked that location. But then I have a capital letter near that dot indicating the name of that point so for for instance here would be point a and here would be point b again capital letters indicating points term is a line a line is a set of points all with the same relationship so if you think about when i say same relationship you could swap out the relationship with the equation um, we've talked a lot about y equals mx plus b in math in general um, when you had math one, you talked a lot about y equals mx plus b and the slope and the y-intercept of a line. x and y, according to that equation, are all the different points that are on those lines. Again, a line is a set of points, an infinite set. There's an infinitely many, infinite number of points on those lines. Um, I got a picture of a line here. Notice that there's two points on this line. Every line has at least two points because you need kind of that second point indicating which direction it's going into. So just one point, you could draw an infinite number of lines through that point. But two points really helps you get the direction of the line. Notice again, capital letters for the points. This is line AC, or if I use the correct notation, A and C, the two points that I picked off of the line, and then the symbol for a line is just a smaller version of line. Notice two arrows for the line. Okay, next we're going to talk about a segment. A segment is a piece of a line or a part of a line, and it has two definite endpoints. So stopping and starting points. It does not continue on forever. This is not an infinite length uh, geometric figure. This is of something that we actually can measure because we have a start and a stop. One of the things that I think a lot of people will think about with this is the idea of measuring it with a ruler. You put the end of one of the ruler on one of the endpoints and you stretch to the other end of the segment and you can actually figure out how long that segment is. You could not do that if this was a line because it would continue on forever. And that's what those arrows of lines indicated. These have defined endpoints like here, E and P on our picture that we drew. Notice that the symbol does not have arrows for line segment indicating that we have no continuation, that we actually have a definite start and a definite stop. So a line segment is a part or a fraction or a piece of a line. Or you've heard the phrase or term plane before was probably with a coordinate plane and graphing. You had an X and a Y axis, but let's kind of make that work for our understanding for what a plane is in general a plane is a two-dimensional area so like a you think of like a flat surface on a table or on a piece of paper where it expands in two directions so we have area meaning it has length and width 
So it's created by having at least three points that aren't on the same line. Any two points are going to be on the same line. But when you get that third point that's not on the same line, then you get that second direction and you cover what's what we call area. So a plane, again, is two dimensions, length and width, and we're covering area. So we're thinking flat surface. Um, I've drawn a three-dimensional picture so I can indicate one of the many planes that are actually present in this picture. So over on the left side, you can see A, B, C, D, that whole side of this three-dimensional figure. That's plane A, B, C, D. Again, at least three points, not on the same line, length and width, flat surface. Okay, our next term is coplanar. So things that are coplanar are in the same plane coplanar with the plane in the same plane so coplanar are points or lines that are in the same plane notice i got another three-dimensional picture over here and you can see that h i j and k all on the top side of this three-dimensional figure are all in the same plane notice that m which is down here is not on that top surface so it wouldn't be coplanar with those other points uh, so H, I, J, and K are coplanar. M, say like H, I, K, M, they would be non-coplanar, so not in the same plane because M is not in the same plane as the others. All you need is that one to mess it up. So coplanar points that lie in the same plane. Finish up with collinear. Collinear with the line or points on the same line points on the same line collinear so if you take a look at this picture here i've just got a plane with uh, five points in it but indicating here with this line you can see that b c and e are all on that line and a and d are not on the same line they're in the same plane but they're not on the same line uh, according to this picture so we say that b c and e notice all of these are capital letters indicating that they're points. So B, C, and E are collinear. B, A, and C would be non-collinear because A is not on the same line as B and C. Okay, I did want to do uh, one exercise with you where I kind of give a real-world example of each of these terms so that you could kind of have even a better visual of, of these concepts that we're talking about. So one of the ways that I'd love for you to think about point, line, and plane is maybe starting like at your house you have a specific address, you have a specific location that you can get your mail delivered to that if your friend wants to visit you, they can type into their GPS on their phone and go and find you. Uh, so your house would be like a point, a specific location. All right. Next uh, is something um, to kind of expand that idea would be like the street that you live on. So if you live on, say, Main Street, then every house that's on Main Street, they're on the same line as you. If you notice, their address will all have Main Street in the address. So you might live at 1213 Main Street, and they and your friend across the street lives at um, 1223 Main Street but you all have Main Street in your address. So your line would be something like a street where again, maybe not every single location is the same, but every single location has the same relationship, which is that street name in their address. All right, a segment, you know, that's gonna be uh, one of those that are a little bit trickier, but again, you're thinking in terms of, you know, a definite, start and a definite stop so you're looking at things that don't go on forever uh, but are made up of multiple um, locations so you could think about this in terms of say like an apartment building so an apartment building has a lot of specific locations but it doesn't continue on continuing it stops at the end of the building so you can even look at this as like a set of apartments or even like like at a shopping mall or, you know, uh, a strip mall where you see like just one big building with several individual stores in it as a definite beginning and a definite end. It does not continue going on past where you could see, but it just, you could see the definite beginning and end right there. A plane. So going back to our house and street and, um, apartment analogies here, a plane would be indicated by maybe your neighborhood. So, you know, 
where you live at in town or where you live at in a specific neighborhood is something that's unique to where other locations are. So for instance, if you live, you know, right near our school and in, in that community, Northridge, you know, there's a lot of streets inside of Northridge, but if you say Northridge, then someone has a reference for the part of town or the grouping of houses or the grouping of locations that in the, that indicate the area of, of, our town that you live in. So a plan would be like your neighborhood where maybe not everybody lives on the same street, but they all have a general location that's all in common. All right. Um, co-linear, you know, things that are co-linear, uh, that'll be, you know, maybe stores that are on the same side of the street with you or, uh, houses that are on the same side of the street with you. Uh, but another thing to think about might be, you know, if we go outside of the analogy that we're using, like if you look at something like if you're at the, the post office and maybe you have a mailbox at the post office and you're looking at the, the wall of all of the different post office boxes that are there, you know, they're, they're all in alpha, not alphabetical or numerical order. So everybody is put in these rows and grids with all according to their, P.O. box number. So everybody on your line with the same couple digits, say 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, all the way to 109, all nine of those would be in the same row. And you could see all of them at once and just kind of one standing. You could see the definite beginning and the definite end. So maybe like a row of P.O. boxes as one example. Coplanar would be like the wall of P.O. boxes. So it's not just that row 101, 102, 103, but it's basically anything with a one in its number. So you could go with the wall of P.O. boxes for the coplanar because you don't just have the one um, row left to right. You also have other rows that are above it, other rows that are below it.